Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Today we're going to be talking about JavaScript modules, uh, specifically the new ES6 import and export syntax. Uh, I've got my typical dev set up here, and there'll be a card in the corner with an earlier video I, uh, where I show how to get the same setup going for you. So for the longest time, JavaScript didn't have a concept of modules, or in other words, the ability to say this part of my code depends on another part of my code. Um, you just wrote a bunch of scripts and concatenated them together and hopefully the order is correct and everything worked fine. So for any serious JavaScript project, concatenating can really become very cumbersome really quick. And so then in JavaScript user land, they created their own specifications for module loading. The two biggest module definitions that were created in user land were CommonJS and AMD, or Asynchronous Module Definition. And so if you've used Dojo or RequireJS, then you're likely familiar with AMD, in which if you want to use uh, code from another file, you, si you say require and you supply the, the list of files uh, or modules that you want to uh, include. So like for instance here we have lib bears we're going to supply. And in which case once that has finished loading it's going to call this function and supply us this bears variable here that we can use uh, right there. And so in the other file if we want to define what this bears will be when somebody requires uh, the, this other dependency we can use define and we'll say define we'll name this uh, bears and we supply a function and we can return bears here so this is a way for us to define when whenever somebody wants to require this file, we can return what they will get when they require that file. And so now here in this index file, when we require that file, uh, it will be it will console log out bears. This is uh, basically AMD. Now, if you've used Node.js or Browserify, then you're likely familiar with CommonJS. And so the syntax there is if we want to require uh, require something from another file, we say ver bears require, and we supply the path to the bears here, uh, lib.bears, and this is going to return a variable that this is requiring. And instead of using define here, uh, we're going to say module exports, and we'll say bears here. And so we just define that this is what you're going to get when you require require this bears.js file and this is the variable that is assigned when we require that other module. So all of that is well and good but we now as of ES6 or ES 2015 we have syntax for defining modules using import and export. So instead of requiring here we can say import bears from lib bears.js and this will create a variable here called bears in our scope uh, from this bears.js file. And so instead of saying module exports here, we can just say export default and what we're gonna be giving uh, when people require or import this file. So even though we have syntax to export variables and things from files and then import them from those files uh, into other files and create uh, modules, uh, these do absolutely nothing uh, on their own. Uh, currently, there is no native implementation on any browser or Node.js at this time. Um, so what we'll need to use is a transpiler or a tool that converts it to either CommonJS or AMD for another module loader to actually load it, or use a bundling tool that knows how to read the syntax and consume it and concatenate it and bundle it up uh, uh, appropriately. A great one for transpiling that I recommend is called Babel. And so if you go to babeljs.io, on their website they'll have setup instructions depending on what environment uh, you're running or what build tools uh, you're using. Uh, so for instance, we're using Browserify here, so we can click on the build system Browserify and, it scroll, and scroll down here to get insta installation instructions specifically for us here. I'll put a link in the video to an earlier video I did that specifically goes over setting up Babel uh, for ES6 or ES2015. So you might be thinking, why should I use this new syntax if it virtually does nothing on its own? Uh, and the hope is eventually browsers and Node.js will eventually implement all of this natively. Uh, so the idea is that your code will be a little bit more future proof, but all of that is really still being heavily debated, so it's up to you. So an interesting part of the specification is named exports 
or rather if we want to export specific parts of our module bears.js here. So by default here, we're using uh, this default keyword to indicate that this module only has a single value or a default value that it exports, and that's the string uh, bears here. But we can define more uh, with names. So we can say, if we wanted to export a function here, we can say export function growl, and it'll be named growl, and it will return what the growl says, we'll say gr. Uh, as well as we can export uh, just variables, uh, so we'll say this constant type, uh, the type of this bear, uh, is grizzly. And so we now have two named exports here, growl and type, in which case we can go over to our file that imports and import those specific uh, variables. Um, so we'll say growl and type. And so what this will do is it will create uh, it within our scope here, it will create the variables growl and type, in which case we can use. So let's say what the bear says, we'll say growl and we'll console log out. We'll say the type of bear that comes, we've imported it here, says, and the results of our, our, our growl function will be there. And so now uh, we can console log out the, the results of uh, importing these external um, functions and variables and go here to our browser and refresh our page. And we can see here that the grizzly says gur. Now we can still access our, our default um, export here alongside our named exports here. So if we still needed access to uh, this bears um, default export here, uh, we just simply put it outside of these uh, curly braces here and uh, we'll have access to this variable here. And so we can just append on here and say hooray bears. And now when we refresh the page, you can see that we get the full string, the grizzly says grr, and hooray bears. Now maybe you're already using a variable called type in your script, or maybe you just don't like the name type, um, and you want to change what this variable name is. Uh, simply type in as uh, afterwards, and give it your own name. So instead of calling it type, which is rather a little generic here, we're gonna call this bear type. And so now this will be available uh, in our scope um, as the variable bear type instead of type. And we can refresh the page and get the same result. So another option is, is maybe you want to import in all of the named exports from within another module here. Uh, and to do that, you can use the wildcard, uh, the asterisk here, um, and this will import in every single named export from this separate module. Now, most of the time, having a bunch of variables from another file being injected into the scope of your other file is not that desirable. So if you're using the wildcard, I highly recommend you using also as and supplying the object or the namespace that uh, all of these uh, variables get uh, included into. So for instance, here, if we say we want all of the named exports from this file to be part of this grizzly object here, and so we can then use this namespace uh, as such and call the grizzly growl dot uh, function and then the grizzly dot type uh, here and get the same exact results when we refresh our page. So named exports gets really interesting when you consider a thing called tree shaking. So I'm gonna go back here to our uh, original example here um, and we're gonna import in this growl uh, function and this type variable here and then use those. Uh, but you notice that we're not using uh, this export default bears here. We're not importing uh, in this bears part. We're leaving that out. And so what tree shaking will do is that when it finally, when it bundles our final thing, it can know that we're not using this part of the code. Just feel free to omit it and not include it into our final bundle. And so in fact, you know, if, if say we're not using uh, this growl function here, we're simply just logging out uh, the type here. Uh, then with tree shaking, we know that we're only importing this type uh, named export. So we can omit and exclude uh, this entire portion of this module. So depending on how the external module is constructed and which parts of that module that you can consume, you can greatly reduce the final size of your assets uh, far more than minification or gzip could accomplish. Now there's a very new module bundler that does this and it's called Rollup. 
If you go to rolluptjs.org, you can get an example of how it does this and how it works and how you can use it. Um, and then I've also seen discussions on implementing tree shaking um, in Webpack and Browserify as well. Uh, so it's a very interesting thing and a very uh, intriguing part of named exports that can uh, greatly uh, uh, optimize our bundles. So I hope you have found this video useful on JavaScript modules. And if you have, then please share the video. And if you want to see more videos, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.